This video is about the central dogma of biology. The word dogma means like a principle or like an overarching idea. And so this basically means the main idea of biology. So let's talk hair for a sec. Hair is made of keratin, which is a protein. If you pluck a piece of your hair from your head, that little bulb that is hiding under your scalp, that's actually where the cells are. And these cells contain DNA. And in the DNA, there's going to be a segment of DNA that we call a gene, and it contains the instructions for making that keratin. So we have this little conundrum. Let's take a look at this picture here. Your DNA is housed inside your nucleus, and it does that to keep it safe. But DNA cannot leave the nucleus. DNA contains the blueprints, though, to make proteins. And if you look at this diagram, you will see that proteins are going to be made out here at ribosomes. So we have this conundrum. How do we get the information that is stored in DNA out to a ribosome to make a protein when DNA cannot leave the nucleus? The answer is we're going to copy it onto RNA first. RNA can leave the nucleus, and so this is going to be our messenger. So what will happen first is we will take a segment of DNA that contains the instructions for making a protein, we call this a gene, and we're going to copy that gene onto a piece of RNA. This is done inside the nucleus and this process is called transcription. Transcription copies the gene onto a piece of RNA, which we're going to call right now mRNA, messenger RNA, and that mRNA is able to leave the nucleus. It's going to leave the nucleus through a little opening in the nucleus called a pore, and it's going to go find a ribosome, and it's going to begin the process of translation. Translation is what actually makes a protein. Let's go back real quick and remind ourselves of how a protein is formed. A protein is made up of amino acids, that's what each one of these little pink circles represents, and when you string these uh, amino acids together, you are going to get what we call a polypeptide. The polypeptide will then have to undergo folding before it can become a functional protein. This whole process here illustrates what we call the central dogma, and that is that DNA is going to contain the information to make proteins, but first we have to copy that message from the DNA onto RNA through the process of transcription, and then the RNA will then be translated into a protein out of ribosome. So two main big processes here, transcription and translation. Here's another way of looking at it. The DNA segment that contains the information, we call it a gene, it is going to get copied onto RNA. That's the process of transcription. Transcription literally means to copy something. Back in the old days before we had printers or even the um, kind of more rudimentary printing press, what we had to do to get copies of books was literally have somebody sit there and copy word for word. They had to hand write every single word. Those people were called scribes and that is what they did all day long. They transcribed books, they copied them. So that's what we're doing here. We are copying the message from DNA onto RNA, and then RNA, we're gonna see later, will get translated into amino acids. That's what each of these circles represents as an amino acid. And so that string of amino acids, we call it a polypeptide, and then it will fold up to become a functional protein. Here's another way of looking at it. So again, we call this the central dogma of biology, and it is that we are going to take the information in DNA, copy it onto mRNA using transcription, and then with the help of tRNAs and ribosomes, which are just made of rRNA, we are going to have the process of translation translate the RNA into protein. I wanted you to see this diagram here so that you can see that all three types of RNA are going to be used. M mRNA is going to be the copy of the the gene from DNA, tRNA is going to help us assemble the proteins at ribosomes which are made of rRNA. And finally, here's one more picture of it. We can look at this in lots of different ways. I'm going to actually label this one. So starting off, we see our double helix. That is going to be our DNA. Wow, that's huge. And then we're going to copy that into RNA. That is what this middle guy is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and label that one as well. This is mRNA. Typically, we're not going to capitalize that first M, by the way. So there's our mRNA right there. And then we can, um, if you spot those kind of gumball looking things down below, those are the amino acids. And so what I'm gonna label that one as, as a growing polypeptide chain. 
So that one can kind of hang out down over here. I misspelled chain, that's okay. So that's our growing polypeptide chain that's being made at the ribosome. This greenish thing right here, that is a tRNA. So if you want to label that guy, that is a tRNA. Again, we're going to use um, the lowercase t for this one. It stands for transfer RNA, and its job is to bring the amino acid to the ribosome. And then remember that the ribosome is actually made of RNA itself, and so this right here, that is made of our rRNA. So I'm going to add that one in as well. There we go. Okay, so one more thing I want to add into is that all of this up here, DNA going to mRNA, if it involves DNA, it's got to be happening in the nucleus. And so I'm just going to label this one as in the nucleus, and you can make these labels work for you in your diagrams. Let's leave that right there. And then all of this down here, <clears throat> this is going to be happening out in the cytoplasm at a ribosome, which I'll just kind of stick down over here. So I'm going to say add a ribosome in the cytoplasm. So you can kind of say either one. They're both true because ribosomes are out in the cytoplasm. Okay, so this is our central dogma. This is the flow of information from DNA to RNA to proteins.